burgeoning realm of games and simulations has become a billion dollar industry. Employing cutting edge technology, many of the world's best minds are creating products that bedazzle and engage players of all ages in everything from killing bad guys to performing life-saving surgeries. These days, engaging simulations and games can be found just about anywhere critical thinking happens. Anywhere that is, except the classroom. X over 360. Our schools are in trouble if our response to things like cell phones um, and new technologies is to ban them, to say, well, you can't bring that into school. And games, I think, are really the cutting edge because they probably more than anything are good at letting people start as novices and become experts. See? Oh, yeah. We don't live in an industrial economy anymore. We live in a knowledge economy, and so we have to think about education in a fundamentally different way. We can't be focusing on basic facts and basic skills. We have to think about ways of thinking that are going to matter more than what we do in traditional schools right now. On the Wii, you can do some of that. Kurt Squire and David Williamson Schaffer research educational games at the University of Wisconsin. In one study, Squire gauged the impact of the game Civilization on a group of 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. A lot of the kids come in uh, hating school, and in particular, really hating social studies. And we start them off just playing the game for fun, uh, seeing if they can't get involved in the game. It's really quite complex. There's a lot of historical vocabulary, a lot of maps, a lot of terminology. They start to think about the model as a simulation of history that they can think with. So they start thinking about how does technology and geography influence the way civilizations grow and fade. Uh, from there, we find that they usually start producing their own games, and all of them now that we work with have gone to straight A's in social studies and, and other areas. And these are 10, 11 year old kids. If you look at one of the biggest crises right now in schools, it's underachieving boys who become labeled ADHD, and then they're starting all these social problems, fighting, and so on. And teachers are really running into, you know, what do we do with these kids? And we think games is a really powerful way to tap into their interests and channel it towards something that's more positive. The kids certainly love it. It's already 9.50. We've got two hours to work on this exam. What I want you to try to do is do a 3D version of a Donkey Kong animation. McKinley Technology High School in Washington, D.C. has embraced the brave new virtual Any world. Any questions? Plagued by declining enrollment and campus violence, the school was shut down in 1997 and reopened six years later as a tech magnet with the latest hardware and a revamped curriculum focusing on biotechnology and digital media. And then you're also controlling the camera, that's good. Let's we'll switch it so you're looking through that camera. We want our students not to be consumers of simulation technology, but designers of simulation technology, where they are determining the structure of how that story is told. For that is where one is able to be creative and personalized. You need to move out your camera. But you still need to move your camera. By enabling them to have the technical skills, they're able to express individualization and creative skills. Basically what I did was I made the stadium and the stage and all the chairs and everything. Even though you see there's a whole bunch of chairs around, it actually didn't take that long at all to do. That was actually the easiest part. By bringing the students and the technologies together, we are able to ensure that the kids see connections beyond just the standard written text or the math problem, to see why math feeds into video game design, how algebra, physics, and geometry are part of what must be considered when trying to design an engaging and interactive experience. So basically this is the American Red Cross fire safety game that a couple of students at McKinley and myself created during the summer. We spent six weeks doing that. There's three to four different rooms because we have the bedroom, the bathroom, and the family room. The purpose of the game is to go through and assess all the fire hazards. And what happens when you see a hazard, you have to click on it, and then it zooms in and it gives you a little excerpt about the fire hazard, like don't overload plugs and things like that. Just the energy of McKinley is so different. It makes you want to learn. They teach us programming and animation and 3D modeling and Maya and things like that, and that's really exciting. McKinley students are also asked to test games and simulations, like this virtual lab developed and distributed for free by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. There is no question that some of our virtual labs, for example, the bacterial ID lab, which involves obtaining DNA sequence, using that to identify an unknown microbe, 
Uh, that's the kind of experiment that is hard to do in most high school settings. So it does allow some teachers to expose students to things that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. The other thing that animation and media is good for is revealing the hidden worlds that simply aren't tangible to people in any other way. And you can tell people it's exciting and interesting, but it's always better to just show them. This is actually how your body deals with some sort of bacterial infection, how it clears it out. You know, minus the really cool graphics. Another game McKinley students helped incubate is Immune Attack, a multi-million dollar project underwritten by the Federation of American Scientists. In the game, you have to reactivate somebody's defunct immune system and teach them how to cope with bacterial and viral infections. Wait, is macrophage? Yep, that's the macrophage right there. Every month or so, we have a new build that we're very interested in getting feedback from students. How does this work? What's complicated about this? What's clear? How can we improve the game? And more recently, we've taken on two McKinley High School seniors as interns at FAS, and they're actually helping to develop the game now. So it's been a very mutually beneficial relationship working with McKinley High School. Whether they are debugging simulations for scientists or test driving the latest commercial games, Kids seem hardwired to the task. <laughs> we have technologies that can help kids learn in new ways, and we can essentially build models of what an education for the future might look like. And my hope in doing that is that parents and teachers and school board members and kids and politicians and all of us will look at what happens in these environments and say, wow, why can't school be more like that? You're going to have three choices for what you want to work on during this class. Seeing their potential to transform public education, the Federation of American Scientists has called for a major federal effort to fund serious games. The potential here is so huge that it just seems a national shame that we're not putting money on the table to find out if this is right. But the payoff is spectacular. You have to think about using this technology that could actually completely transform productivity in education and get people who would otherwise be uninterested or underserved by this system fully engaged, but we just can't afford to leave anybody behind. Land. That's, That's like geography. geography. I think the advances in technology these days are going to allow the gaming and simulation community to create simulations of anything. And when we can deploy that over the internet, we will then have on every desktop the best teacher in the world available to every student. Good games are really compelling for their players to the point that people are worried about you know addiction and things. And you know it's ironic. You imagine is there a world in which we'd have you know addiction to school? You know someone walking and saying I'm addicted to learning. I need more. Woo!